Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. Color roll, please. Keith Bratcher. Here. Joe Crowell. Here. Linda Dansby. Present. Joe Machado. Here. Jerry Sartain. Here. Tony Webb. Zane Cantrell. Present. We do have a quorum, sir, and all voting members are present. Okay. Our regular me uh, members are present. We'll be voting. Uh, you have the minutes that were mailed out to you last month. Do we have any changes in the minutes? We have a motion they be approved as mail. We have a motion they be approved. Do we have a second? Uh, I think I'm going to call Joe out of order, so I need, a, <laughs> I need another motion. So second. Moved. Okay. Sorry, Joe. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed like sign. The minutes are approved. We have uh, two items before us today. We will uh, ask a report from our staff. Following that report, we'll ask those of you who have a uh, request before us to come to the podium and give us any additional information. There may be some questions from the board concerning uh, uh, your request. Uh, after that, we will have a public hearing on each item and give you anyone a chance to make whatever comments that they need to make before we uh, vote on the uh, final determination of those requests. The first item we have is a request by Tony Carlton, who is uh, asking for a conditional use permit to allow a portable sawmill operation. Application 2010-04, filed by Tony Carlton, involves a 15-acre parcel located in the R15 district. This property is located at 12,681 Highway 99. And he is seeking conditional use approval to establish a sawmill operation in this area. It is a portable sawmill that will be operated by the applicant and his brother. Uh, they indicate on their application that they will be in operation from 7 to 3 on Monday through Friday and that he will be constructing a 60 by 100 uh, foot building to house the store, the portable sawmill and its uh, related materials to serve this use. He is not proposing any signage that there will be not any direct interaction with customers on the site. No one could just stop and, and purchase materials from the applicant. Um, the applicant has indicated that they will be storing one log truck and one um, pickup truck on the site to serve the business. There will be a tractor also stored at the site, but the site also acts as a farm for uh, cows and pasture. They will have a portalette to provide bathroom facilities to the, app, uh, to the workers or the applicant and his brother. And he does indicate that there's a, a fire hydrant within 500 feet of the site. Uh, staff has recommended conditions. Um, we recommended the condition for the one family member and the applicant, and that was based on what the applicant was seeking approval for in the application. However, it has been brought to our attention that our major home-based business um, does allow uh, up to three non-resident employees with what's going on. So. Staff finds that it meets the criteria for conditional use, provided that they meet the conditions. However, if the operation um, becomes more intense, that further review would be required. And this is the site in question. Um, it is 15 acres. Uh, the areas surrounding it are large tracts. Um, some are, uh, have homes on it, and some of them are just operating as farms. Uh, this is the site right now. Um, there is a structure already on the property and a tractor is there. Uh, surrounding properties. This is, uh, uh, that was a house located across the street. And 
the applicant supplied us with a plan for construction. He's going to have use the existing driveway, maybe create like a turnaround. Uh, the red structure will be the location of the new building that he will be constructing, and the existing barn is represented on that. This is the actual sawmill that he's proposing to use. It's an LT70 by Wood Miser. It is portable. It has the capability of being hitched on a truck and carried to other sites. He um, indicated, if I didn't cover it already, that he will be cutting um, fence posts, barn package wood, wood pallets, as well as railroad ties. So those were, will be the types of operations that will be uh, implemented at the site. And that concludes our presentation. Is that it? Yes. Do we have anyone here representing this request? Did you did, did they know about the meeting? Uh, yes, we set up a copy. Three, a minimum of three letters or two at least. All right. Do we have anyone here that wants to speak on this request for the public hearing? If you, if you do, would you come around to the podium and give us any information? Just come around to this podium, give us your name, and share any information you'd like to. My name is Dwight Thronberry. I live at 2729 Avedon Court in Murfreesboro. Uh, reason I'm up here, uh, we own, uh, me and my wife owns 100 acres next to this property. Uh, I don't want to knock nobody out of doing any business, but I do not think that it is a appropriate uh, thing to be put at this uh, spot because of the housing and as somebody mentioned in the other meeting that uh, this area is growing, and there'll be some houses built uh, on there, on the, some of the land. The other part is the stuff that he cuts and stores outside can become, a, uh, I think, a fire hazard. And uh, uh, y'all asked about the fire hydrant. Uh, they put in the new road. I think it would, it would be adequate, but I, I can't answer that question. You'd have to talk to the, the uh, consolidated people on that. But, I do not think it's uh, appropriate for this uh, area, and uh, I like to see it turned down. Anyway, just a minute. Any questions? Thank you. Anyone else would like to speak on this request? Commissioner? Thank you. Anyone else? My name is Lucia Roberts. I live at 178 Navy Circle in Mount Juliet. And speaking in front of a group of people is not my Forte. So please bear with me. I'm concerned about several issues. I'm concerned about the air pollution from the sawmill. I'm concerned about the noise pollution. I'm concerned about the residents that live in the area. And I'm concerned about the farmers who farm that area. I think it creates a perilous condition on the road and I think it decreases our property values. Thank you. Wait just a minute, thank you. Do we have any questions? Ms. Roberts, do you, do you have, you say you live in Mount Julie, but do you have property? I do. Just, okay, okay, thank I you. Do. My property is 12480 okay. on Highway 99. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Anyone else like to speak on this request? We'll close the public hearing. We do not have uh, the applicant here. Normally, when we don't have the applicant, we delay until next month. That's our policy. But this, uh, this would be up to you folks, whatever you'd like to do on this. 
I make a motion that we defer till next month. There are still many questions that we need to ask the applicant. And if he chooses not to appear next month, then we can make a decision. Okay, we have a motion that it be delayed till next month. Do we have a second? Call the roll, please. Keith Bratcher? Yes. Linda Dansby? Yes. Jerry Sartain? Yes. Tony Webb? Yes. Zane Cantrell? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, your testimony that you gave today will go in the record. And uh, you will be notified uh, whether we will continue this next month. The, only, we appreciate your involvement. The next item we have is a request by Rutherford County Volunteer Fire Department who is requesting a conditional use permit for a volunteer fire station and this would be relief for uh, parking space and materials, uh, relief for maximum lot coverage requirements and relief from minimum lot area. Those three. It's my understanding. Yes, three okay. variants. And we will take this up in, in one decision. Go ahead. Application 2010-5 is filed by the Rutherford County Volunteer Fire Department. They are seeking conditional use approval to establish a fire station in the R15 zone. This site is located at 2785 Barfield Road. It's a 0.8 acre site. And um, they are also seeking variance approvals from the minimum lot area requirements. That's one acre for other uses in the R15 zone. Variance relief from the development standard requiring asphalt paving. They are seeking the ability to use gravel. However, if finances allow in the future, they would love to have paved driveways and parking areas. And they are also seeking variance relief from the maximum lot coverage requirements. The structure that they're constructing is 122 by 62. This footprint exceeds the 20% uh, max for R15 properties by like 500 square feet. So this will be the main fire station for the Rutherford County Volunteer Fire Department. It will have four fire truck bays, uh, three offices, a kitchen, a training room, living area, and the second floor will have living facilities, a, a laundry room, a kitchen. This will be a 24-7 manned fire station. So. <clears throat> Article 7, Section 17, 702 um, are, lists our conditions for uh, conditional use criteria, and we have addressed each of them. They, uh, the site is located in an area that they can better serve uh, this district. Uh, it's central in location and they tried to acquire additional land area from the seller but the seller was willing to only sell this 0.8 acre. This was platted off and uh, as this lot was being platted they also received approval from the Planning Commission to allow off-site septic soil. So this, they do have some hardship that, it, that exists. Um, the lot does meet the minimum lot width requirements for the district, and they are meeting the front, rear, and side yard setbacks. Uh, staff has included recommended conditions for the board to consider, and um, we recommend approval, and I'll just go through the slide. This is the location of the site. It's across the street from a subdivision, and there's a little commercial site to um, further down Barfield Road, and it's across the street. The, at the site itself, we posted the sign. Um, new subdivision across the street, Martha's Haven. And we'll be coming up on the site plan. And I've just zoomed in on the, the main area. You can see the geometry plan showing the driveways, the parking areas. You can show the placement of the building. It's going to have an office area and a fire station um, portion slightly separate. One portion will be elevated to the other. And um, it's general layout. And that concludes our presentation. We have someone here representing this request. If, you, if we do, would you please come around to the podium?
Give us your name and any additional information. Alexander, I'm a lieutenant with Rutherford Volunteer Fire Department. Uh, as I said, if we are proposing a fire station out in Barfield, uh, what this will do is uh, if the station's approved, it will greatly reduce our response time out into the Barfield Crescent area uh, that will put us out in our community instead of in the city where we are currently located. Uh, this station will be replacing the station that we have now, uh, which is currently located at 810 Old Salem Road. Uh, the station will, the proposed station will hopefully be manned 24-7. Uh, and the station is laid out to be that way. Uh, it does have living quarters upstairs. It's got a day room. Downstairs we have a training room, three offices, kitchen, uh, et cetera. Uh, the station will also be, uh, the kitchen will be a commercial kitchen, uh, which will be designed to house emergency responders should we have a lengthy either natural disaster or anything related to that. Uh, we'll be able to house responders that come in from out of town for extended periods of time. Do we have any questions? Keith? Um, where y'all are asking for the variance uh, for the parking lot, I know y'all are volunteer fire departments, but in the future, as funds become available, y'all probably plan to pave that? Uh, we do plan to pave it at this time. Uh, we're trying to pave it when we build the station. It really just depends on the funds. Right. Uh, bids at the station came in around $600,000, plus or minus 20%, and that's just for the building. That's not counting. Uh, the parking lots or the concrete that we'll have to pour which will actually support the trucks uh, so okay. as of right now it's in the budget but it may have to come out depending on funding All right. thank you any other questions linda i did have a question um did you your group purchase this lot or was it a gift uh, we did purchase the property you did purchase it did you have your plans drawn up at the time you purchased the lot or have you drawn your plan since the purchase? Uh, the conceptual plan was actually drawn at that time. Mm -hmm. I was unaware of the lot requirements uh, that was brought to my attention after I submitted uh, to the Planning Commission to come to you guys. What's the footprint or what's the first floor square footage? Uh, the building is 122 by 62. So, let me crunch the numbers real quick. I have the total square footage in the report, but I don't know what the... Um, it's it's 7,564. That's the footprint of the building. The, the maximum, the 20% is 7,008 square feet. So, it's, it's only about 556. Only about 556 square foot variance that he's asking for on that. Yes, it's unfortunate. What kind of agreement did you come to on your soil site? What if the neighboring property owner decides to sell? <laughs> um, we actually have an easement which is written into our deed uh, saying they gave us properties for secondary and septic or primary and secondary septic systems uh, which runs directly adjacent to the lot. If you're looking from this angle it'll be directly to the bottom of where our lot is. Um, but that actually is written in our deed. Uh, so we do, you know, it, it's in the deeds. So we have an easement for it. Yeah. I also noticed you've got some flood areas right up against the back flood zone. Are you going to have to build up a pad or anything like that to protect your property? We do have to elevate. Um, I was talking with the surveyor about it earlier this week. I believe we are going to have to elevate the property around two feet or two and a half feet, depending on which uh, corner of the building that you're looking at. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Thank you. We'll open this for a public hearing. For anyone who'd like to speak on it, would you please come around? Give us your name and any additional information. Commissioner. Mr. Chairman and board members, uh, my name is Gary Farley. I'm the county commissioner of this area. I'll tell you a little bit of a little story here. It's been at least 10 years since um, myself and, and, the, and the former chief and some members of that department have been going door to door in the Barfield area trying to find a location. Back a few years ago, uh, MTAST, which is, uh, is a study group for the any county agencies, I mean CTAST is a, is a study group for uh, county agencies. The fire person, the consultant, drew up a county plan. And part of this plan was that this station in this area is where it needed to be at. Um, there's a, if any of you know anything about ISO, I know Keith does, anything over five miles 
it's a class nine. There's some areas out there in the Christiana area right now because of where their station is at on, over by Samsonite and industrial is over five miles. So the people that I represent and that they cover out there are class nine. Might as well not have any uh, protection. This is gonna benefit not only those citizens, but the citizens of Rockvale, Christiana, Fosterville, Midland, uh, and, and, and some other Salem Blackman area because of the response time. It's just not gonna be one area, it's gonna be a multitude of areas that this will benefit. Uh, I stand before you today to ask you to approve this because it's been a long time coming. These guys work hard um, and they do it for free. Uh, if it hadn't been for the Smith family right across the street there, uh, we wouldn't have had this location. They sold it to them. Uh, they weren't trying to get rich off of it. They sold it to them at a decent, actually below decent price to be honest with you. They could have got a whole lot more for it. And because uh, it's right there pretty close to the old Barfield manufacturing building. So I asked you to help them and help the people out there in that area. Thank you. Wait just a minute, Commissioner. Any questions? Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak on this? Close the public hearing. I'll entertain a motion on it. Make a motion be approved. Have a motion it be approved. We have a second. Second. Got a second. Call the roll, please. Keith Bratcher? Yes. Linda Dansby? Yes. Jerry Sartain? Yes. Tony Webb? Thane Cantrell? Yes. Motion carries, sir. It is approved. Do we have any other items before us? We are adjourned. Thank you very much.